So what we do exactly is uh, we compare gene expression, which is uh, like COMP and SOX9. They're both induced and uh, uh, they're found in chondrocyte. SOX9 in the nucleus and COMP in the matrix. Volume 2 is found in osteocyte uh, nucleus and collagen 1 in the uh, osteocyte matrix. You might wonder why we, uh, we added osteogenic gene expression. That's because, uh, that's because uh, uh, as you know, in the process of osteogenesis, it first goes through chondrogenesis. We want to know if we went too far with it, okay? So if you look here, uh, we would compare the, the control with uh, TGF beta 1, which was the highest. It shows high upregulation, which is a good sign. That means chondrogenesis have acted as target. And also SOX9. Without SOX9, there's no chondrogenesis. This is the new it should be there. It was very high upregulated, and that's a very good thing. In Volix 2, we found that the mix is going high, which means that the mixture of the growth factors that we added it kind of went into the osteogenesis direction instead of chondrogenesis. Collagen 1, they were all low, and that's not bad. That's actually good because it's more of an osteogenic marker than a, a gene than an osteogenic uh, Okay, on day 24, uh, the results are um, showing that TGF-BK1 have also increased uh, come as well as beta 3 uh, uh, beta 1 if you find it was 173 year and now it's uh, oh, sorry 376 okay and SOX9 also had an upregulation of beta 3 it, was, it wasn't high there as well those both uh, signs show that beta 1 and beta, beta 3 have induced uh, chondrogenesis but beta 1 was better because it started earlier okay so it was the best in our experiment one is two uh, we found that beta 3 as well induced Ranix 2, which means that um, beta 3, as it in, uh, induced uh, chondrogenesis, it also induced osteogenesis. Okay? So, to, sorry, uh, to conclude uh, our gene expression results, we would, we would like to say that beta 1 plays a major role, definitely. And as we, you might think that beta 3 did as well, but we, we think that beta 3 went in uh, both osteogenic and chondrogenic, not very specific. Mixing was uh, more of an osteogenic growth factor, which means that uh, it's not as significant as we wanted it to be. Okay, this could not be um, um, confirmed until it was repeated at least two weeks. Now I will leave you with the second part of the data collection tools of histology. I'm going to continue the histological analysis. We use two things. Uh, we use lock section and embedding method for the cell pilot. Uh, however, the cell types were very tiny, but we managed to obtain some data for the histological results. Now, the first uh, slide shows the uh, control. Sorry, it shows the cells before adding any growth factors. That was on day zero. So we can see we just added the chondrogenic media. So we see that on magnification twenty, we see the surface interaction. We see the round morphology and also the three D pellet response successor. And to make sure that was an infection in the UC in the United States. And when adding ashen blue stain, which is a very specific stain for chondrogenic differentiation, we also don't see any signs of uh, differentiation has started there, which is good because this is day zero. We didn't add any growth factors yet. Now on day 21, we have two conditions here. That's the control condition where we didn't add any growth factor, and that's the TGF beta 1 condition. Now we can see that some cell clusters have formed already here. And there's some chondrogenic matrix started to form also. Now, when we see the uh, day 21 cell pellets uh, with algae blue stain, which is, as we said, very specific for chondrogenic differentiation, we can see that on the data one condition, the matrix has formed, chondrogenic matrix. It stains blue. And uh, also cell clusters are seen here. Now, this slide just show, show you the comparison between the easier control, where there wasn't any chondrogenic differentiation yet, and that's day 21 control also. And here, day 21 is used with CGF beta 1. So cell clusters are larger, and there's matrix, chondrogenic matrix. And uh, in conclusion, the histology backed up the PCR results we see in see of now. And uh, we recommend that whoever wants to do future work about uh, chondrogenic uh, differentiation of uh, human embryonic stem cells, uh, that they would study more the, the effect of CGF beta 1 because we see that's the was most potent growth factor in our experiment. That was about the experimental part. Now I'll continue with the questionnaire that we conducted about stem cell knowledge. We distributed a questionnaire among uh, 52 third-year medical students, female only, 
and we were interested in uh, learning how much they know about stem cell and their interests and Islamic beliefs about it. These are the most significant results. Now, when we asked them about how much do they know about stem cells, 76.9 said that they know very little knowledge. And uh, when we asked them about their, if they're interested in attending some workshops or um, lectures about stem cell within the next two years, 94.2 said yes, they are really interested in this field. And when we asked about the Islamic beliefs, um, if there's any Islamic limitations for using disposed unneeded embryonic stem cells in clinical research, 42.3 said that there are some limitations, but actually there isn't any. And um, what was um, really surprising that uh, 96.2 would agree to be treated by stem cell in the future, although they think there are some limitations. Now that shows that there's a very big gap in uh, their knowledge about stem cell. So what we recommend that they we have to spread awareness more about stem cells' uh, knowledge and uh, uh, Islamic beliefs and therapeutic point of view. So we recommend that the stem cell department would uh, conduct a seminar every semester, for example, for medical students, just to learn the medical, uh, the basics of the stem cell. And we recommend to include some lectures of basic stem cell knowledge on, in our curriculum, the first two basic science years. Uh, we'd like to ask to thank uh, whoever who helped us to stand here today and present this. The stem cell team, uh, on top of them, uh, Dr. Abdullah Dahmaj, their supervisor, and Dr. Mayn al-Muhabin, and Dr. Muna Safadi as well for her support, and Dr. Ali for his advice, he helped us a lot in the histological analysis, Mr. Mani for learning, teaching us uh, PCR and lab technique, and Dr. Ra'id for his uh, consistent support. And we also like to thank Dr. Amna for whenever we needed help, she was there for us. And Prof. Mustafa yeah, for allowing the differentiation to start there in your lab. And all our third year medical students who helped us in participating with the procedure. All things are in Vancouver style. <laughs> and we wouldn't forget Dr. Ahmed, our supervisor, for without him we wouldn't do anything. We wouldn't do what we've done. He was really supportive and very, we we're very great. For us. I believe they did this a little bit in the slide, in the second slide, the third slide, where they showed where the embryonic stem cells are derived from and where the other stem cells are derived from and how they differentiate. And obviously, if you can take these embryonic stem cells and how they showed in the slide, you can put them into the dish. And then you can derive um, 
drive these um, undifferentiated cells into various lineages and then reconstitute these different tissues, then uh, I think they, they touched upon this. No, I, I thought the end of it was you see it. with what is its application would be perhaps after much more research. Thank you very much. Uh, your, please introduce yourself. Uh, Dr. Amr Mahmoud will introduce. But I'm Dr. Rai. I'm just working with him. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Please introduce yourself. Can I have Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm Dr. Mayan Abani, I'm the laboratory director of Stem Cell Unit. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank, the, oh, it was the first opportunity for us and first uh, students in, on the third year for, and they were actually um, a very good example yeah. and positive they were very and they Yes, yeah. and they are active. And also I would like also Dr. Ahmed, he was really, really yes. so encouraging them and support them and guide them in every single day and every single, all the, the experiment. Also, I would like to add, we are doing in a regular basis, actually, in all, uh, every summer time, uh, research and uh, training for all the students and uh, okay. even for uh, uh, post-graduated or master students training in, in our lab. So everybody is welcome in our lab. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, now we will uh, break for, if as less as possible, for a tea and coffee break. You're all welcome for five to seven minutes. Can you be back to complete in time by 12? Okay. Thank you. So come back by uh, 15 minutes to 11.